The need for a technically sound manpower at various correctional centers across Nigeria re-echoed on the floor of the Senate. The legislators believe its significance transcends a policy pronouncement and therefore a bill to establish a Nigerian Correctional Services Academy was initiated, sponsored by Senator Ramoni Mustafa and has passed second reading. Lead debate on the bill for an act to establish Nigerian Correctional Service Academy in Yabuibo, Establishment Bill 2021 SB 505. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, I'm delighted to lead the debate on the bill to enact an act to establish the Nigerian Correctional Service Academy in Yebuibo, Establishment Bill 2021, to serve as an institution of high-level manpower development with the mandate to train officers and men of the correctional service to acquire and attain the highest standards of professionalism and award such certificates as may be approved by the relevant academic regulatory body from time to time and for other related matters. You will recall that this bill was read for the first time on, on Wednesday, 25th November 2020. The academy was established in 2010 and has trained different levels of officers of the correctional service. This academy will provide strategic leadership training to the Nigerian Correctional Service, which is most desirable in the administration of the criminal justice system. It is the desire of all Nigerians to live peacefully and, co and cooperate with all, with all. Nevertheless, no defense apparatus could live in pure idealistic way. It has to be very realistic and remain prepared for any emergency. Hence, the need for proper training that will provide for an effective coordination between security services and other aspects of the country's, eco country's economic, industrial, and administrative life, including the country's foreign policy. The establishment of this institution had become very desirable and a positive necessity to meet the security of our correctional centers as they, were likely to be, to, as they are likely to be in future. Nigeria has been battling insecurity and had to face these problems continuously for a considerable period now. The academy will develop a broader outlook and understanding out of which will grow a broader strategy. Mr. President, the setting up of the academy will serve as a multi-service institution that will provide future decision makers with necessary skills and background for filling senior positions in the service and associated fields. The Nigerian Correctional Service Academy can also provide joint training and instruction to both junior and, and senior service and civil officers and will be under the administrative control of the Ministry of Interior. The study at the academy will relate to strategic economic, scientific, political, and industrial aspects of national, interna internal security and correctional service matters, which will not be limited to the scope of study, but also the aim will include an examination of internal and external threats to the security of Nigeria, as well as possible trends in the future. Such studies will include analysis of diverse factors, such as security policies of states and that of the federal government conflicts over vital economic interests or territorial claims and factional, communal, or political differences. Members of the course will also analyze formulation of national strategy for the administration of our prisons. Objectives of the bill. The bill is to provide the legal and institutional framework for the already established academic institution responsible for high standard training and award of certificates in the correctional service. If this bill is passed into law, just like other similar security organizations, the academy will provide for the confirm confirmation of the highest academic qualifications, training, and also provide for equipping of our correctional service corps with the required knowledge and skills that will, that will be recognized by other institutions the world over. The proposed institution will therefore outline a comprehensive academic and skill program that will equip our correctional service with the technical knowledge to execute its mandate of, pro of providing effective management and security of correctional centers in Nigeria. The Correctional Service Academy is expected to be the correctional service, is expected to be, to be to the correctional service what the Nigerian Police Academy are to the Nigerian police. Overview of the clauses of the bill. The overriding principles behind the introduction of this bill 
is to provide the legal and institutional framework for the establishment of higher institutions that will bridge the noticeable gap of lack of a recognized higher institution to train correctional service officers. The bill has 36 clauses, subdivided into six parts, with the following as the main clauses. Part 1, clauses 1 to 14, incorporates the establishment, objectives, powers, bodies, and officers of the academy. Part 2, clause 15, deals with the academy's property and transfer of property to, property to it. Part 3, clauses 14, 16 and 17, incorporation of provisions relating to the to the statutes of the academy and procedures of statutes. Part 4, clauses 18 to 24, addresses the financial provisions, namely funds of the academy, financial year of the academy, keeping of proper record of account, estimate of income and expenditure, annual reports, annual audits, and direction on, amount, on account opening. Part 5, clauses 25 to 29, incorporates the supervision and discipline matters relating to visitation of the academy, removal of chairman and member of the council, removal of academy provost or member of staff, suspension of staff of the academy and duty to serve instrument of removal. Part six, clauses 30 to 36 cover, covers miscellaneous and general clauses relating to disposal of land of the academy, powers of the bodies established under this bill, seal of the academy, powers of the council to make statutes Public Officers Protection Act, CAP P419 LFN 2004, Interpretation and Citation. This bill has first and second schedules, with the first schedule dealing with the principal officers and their functions, and the second schedule dealing with the transitional provisions as to property, functions, etc. Conclusion, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, in, in view of the foregoing, I urge you all to please support the, pre, the speedy passage of this bill. This bill has no financial burden on government as the academy is already in place with the full complements of directing officers and staff of the service. Permit me to first of all commend my good friend, Senator Leko Mustafa, for having the foresight in the first place to bring forward the idea of establishing this academy. He did that when he was in the sixth Senate and uh, he made sure that uh, the academy was built and, as we speak, is now being used to train professionals who are working in uh, correctional, correctional uh, service. Uh, it is an institution like uh, what we have in the police force, where we have the uh, Nigerian Police College. But, uh, yeah, Police Academy. Uh, he said too, there wasn't this uh, institution. Uh, I give kudos to him. And now he's bringing forward the bill, this bill, in order, in order to give the institution a legal backing. It's something that is commendable. And uh, we should not only stop at this, we should do all within our powers to improve on what he has done, particularly in this period where. Uh, correctional facilities have been threatened by those who don't mean well for this country, who try to destabilize these facilities by instigating uh, attacks on them. So I think we need to do more, and I, the federal government is doing very well in establishing more uh, correctional facilities. But those who are to man these facilities should be further trained. We should give them more training. Uh, using this very, very uh, important academy that uh, has been established through the efforts of our uh, colleague, Senator Leko Mustafa. Therefore, I call on my colleagues to make sure that we give this bill a speedy, a speedy passage because of its importance. Uh, I commend, I further, let me recommend, I commend uh, uh, the efforts of uh, Senator Leko Mustafa, and uh, like I said earlier, let's all come together to make sure that... Uh
We are now reaching you from the floor of the Senate where senators have reconvened for Wednesday, Wednesday's plenary, today, 19th of May, 2021. Well, uh, at the moment, uh, senators are, are considering motions of urgent public importance before they will begin to go into the items scheduled for consideration on the day's order paper. From the order paper, five bills will be considered for first reading while five bills as well will be going for second reading. We have three bills that will be coming for third reading. And then from the bills that will be coming for second reading, we expect that the Senate will be considering uh, the Terrorism Act Amendment Bill will be coming for second reading. That bill is uh, sponsored by Senator Onyewuchi Ezenwa. I am Ignatius Nkwo. Let's now follow the proceedings of the day. Distinguished colleagues, the first business of the day is the presentation of our bill standing in the name of Distinguished Senator Suleiman Abdukari on the Money Laundering Prevention and Prohibition Enactment Bill 2021. Mr. President, you may wish to invite the clerk of the Senate to read the short title of the bill. Clerk of the Senate. Mr. President, Distinguished Senators, Money Laundering Prevention and Prohibition Enactment Bill. 2021 SB 642 first reading. Thank you. Money laundering prevention and prohibition enactment bill 2021 SB 642 first reading taken. Leader of the Senate. The President, my highly respected and distinguished colleague. The second business of the day is the presentation of our bill standing in the name of the Tungu Senator George Sekibo on the Immigration Act 2010 Amendment Bill 2021. Mr. President, you may wish to invite the clerk of the Senate to read the short title of the bill. Clerk of the Senate. Mr. President, the Tungu Senator's Immigration Act 2010 Amendment Bill 2021, SB 694, first reading. Immigration Act 2010 Amendment Bill 2021 SB 694 first reading taken. Leader of the Senate. Mr. President, the third business of the day is the presentation of a bill standing in the name of the Stugu Senator Adeliri Adeyemi Oriolowo on the Federal Institutes of Tractorization and Field Applications, Precision Agriculture and Irrigation Technology. Establishment Bill 2021. Mr. President, you may wish to invite the clerk of the Senate to read the short title of the bill. Clerk of the Senate. Mr. President, distinguished senators, federal issues of tractorization, field application, precision agriculture and irrigation technology establishment bill 2021, SB 723, first reading. Federal Institutes of Tractorization field applications, precision agriculture and irrigation technology establishment bill 2021, SB 723, first reading taken. Leader of the Senate. Mr. President, my highly respected and distinguished colleagues, the fourth business of the day is the presentation of a bill standing in the name of distinguished Senator Tessalim Folari on the National Environmental Standards and Regulations Enforcement Agency, NESRIA Act. 2007, Amendment Bill 2021. Mr. President, you may wish to invite the clerk of the Senate to read the short title of the bill. Clerk of the Senate. Mr. President, distinguished senators, National Environmental Standards and Regulation Enforcement Agency, NESRA Act, 2007, Amendment Bill 2021, SB 724, first reading. National Environmental Standards and Regulations Enforcement Agency, NESRA, 2007 Amendment Bill 2021, SB 724, first reading taken. Leader of the Senate. Mr. President, my highly respected and distinguished colleagues, the field business of the day is the presentation of our bill standing in the name of distinguished Senator Uche Lilie Ekunife on the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 Alteration Bill 2021. Mr. President, you may wish to invite the clerk of the Senate to read the short title of the bill. Clerk of the Senate. Mr. President, distinguished senators, Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, Alteration Bill 2021, SB 725, first reading. 
1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria Alteration Bill 2021, SB 725, first reading taken. Leader of the Senate. So, President, my highly respected and distinguished colleagues, the first order of the day is the second reading of the Federal University of Science and Technology, Lao, Taraba State Establishment Bill 2021. The distinguished senators will recall that the bill was read the first time in this distinguished chamber on Wednesday, 17th March. 2021. Mr. President, you may wish to invite the Tungu Senator Isa Shaibulao to move the motion for the bill to be read the second time. The Tungu Senator Isa Shaibulao. Thank you, Mr. President, my distinguished colleagues, Isa Shaibu representing the good people of Taraba North. Mr. President, my distinguished colleagues, permit me to lead the debate of this very important bill for the establishment of the Federal University of Science and Technology, Lao Taraba State. The bill was read for the first time in this hallowed chamber on Wednesday, 17 March 2021. Mr. President, my distinguished colleague, this bill seeks to establish the Federal University of Science and Technology law and comprehensive provision for its due management and administration. The establishment of this institution is informed by the imperative to create more access to university education in view of the large number of qualified candidates who are annually stranded in their failed attempt in gaining admission into the University of Education, particularly in the northeastern part of Nigeria. The object of the university shall be to encourage the advancement of learning to hold out to all persons without distinction of race, creed, sex, or political conviction the opportunity of acquiring higher and liberal education. B, provide courses of instruction and other facilities for the pursuit of learning in all its branches and to make those facilities available on proper time to such persons as equipped to benefit from them. C, to encourage and promote scholarship and conduct research in restricted fields of learning and human endeavor. D, to relate its activities to the social, cultural, and economic needs of the people of Nigeria and undertake other activities appropriate for a university of higher standard. Mr. President, my distinguished colleagues, our economy has very high potentials and requires high level technical, scientific, and administrative skill to drive it. To drive the establishment of this university will go a long way into achieving those targets. Mr. President, my distinguished, my distinguished colleague, this bill is well organized for its very own purpose of modern academic and research institution. The objectives of the university as articulated above are supportive of its mission and broad vision of modern institution that we develop world-class technologies as well as human resources that can sustain, sustainably manage our nation's economy by providing technical and management expertise at the highest level. The university is therefore to further advance knowledge through research and nurture unique and technological innovations, entrepreneurship, and wealth management in its core area of demand. Mr. President, my distinguished colleagues, the enactment of this bill will help in transforming the technological and educational fortunes 
in Nigeria, in Nigeria in producing the desired manpower expertise that Nigeria is yearning for. In view with our order 77 sub 3, the compendium of financial implication is hereby attached. Mr. President, my distinguished colleagues, I urge all to support this bill for the second reading. Thank you. Yes, Senator Olujimi. Thank you very much, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues. I am Diodu Olujimi. I am Senator representing Ekiti South. Mr. President, I rise to second this bill. Mr. President, there is no gain saying that education is the bedrock of any nation. And we cannot have enough of these establishments that will help our youths to go to school and become better citizens of the country. Mr. President, a few days ago, I was at my local government to commission one of the secondary schools that was built by the SDG. And I found out that in just one school in my local government, the Kitiis local government, they had an enrollment of 1,875 pupils. Those students will eventually go into one institution or the other. If we do not lay a foundation for them in every state, we will find out that when it's time for them to get uh, access to higher education, it might be tough. Mr. President, this is one of the reasons for which we are here, to ensure that federal presence is felt in all our local governments and in all our localities. I, I support and second this. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Is anybody against the bill? <coughs> Those in favor that this bill be now read a second time, say aye. Those against any, the ayes have it. Clerk of the Senate. Mr. President, distinguished senators, a bill for an act to provide for the establishment of the Federal University of Science and Technology Law, Taraba State, and for related matters thereof, 2021, SB 672, second reading. A bill for an act to provide for the establishment of the Federal University of Science and Technology Law, Taraba State, and for related matters thereof, 2021, second reading taken. And the bill is referred to the Committee on Tertiary Institutions and Third Fund to report by within four weeks. Leader of the Senate. Mr. President, my highly respected and distinguished colleagues, the The second order of the day is the second reading of the Federal University of Sports Establishment Bill 2021. Distinguished senators will recall that the bill was read the first time in the distinguished chamber on Tuesday, 5th November 2019. Mr. President, you may wish to invite the distinguished senator Obina Ogba to move the motion for the bill to be read the second time. Distinguished Senator Obina Ogba, Ebony Central. Thank you, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, Obi Noba, Ebony Central. Mr. President, permit me to lead the debate on the Federal Sports University, establishment of Federal University of Sports in Karagaboy State, Establishment Bill 2021, SB138. Mr. President, permit me to lead the debate of this very important bill for the establishment of the Federal Sports University of Nigeria in Karagaboy State. The bill was read for the 
first time in this hello chamber on Tuesday, 5th November 2019. The bill seeks to establish the Federal Sports University of Nigeria and Calabar State and to make comprehensive provisions for its due management and administration. The very essence of this bill is to provide a highly specialized institution where youths of our nation can be developed in various sporting endeavors in an academically charged environment. The objectives of the University of Sports, among others, include encourage the advancement of learning and to hold out to all persons without distinction or race, creed, sex or political conviction, the opportunity of acquiring higher education in sports, to develop and offer academic and professional programs led, leading to the award of diploma, first degree, postgraduate, research and high degrees with emphasis on planning, adaptive technical maintenance, development and productive skills in the engineering and allied professionals disciplines relating to sports resources with the aim of producing socially mature men and women with capability not only to understand the use of adopt existing technologies in sports, but to improve on them and develop new ones. To act as an agent at Catalyst through post graduate training, research, and innovation for the effective and economic utilization, exploration, and conservation of the country's sports resources. To offer to the general population, particularly the area of sports, as a form of public service, the result of training and research, and to foster the practical application of this result to establish appropriate relationship with other national institutions involved in training, research and development of technology in the sports sector, to identify the problems and needs for sports in Nigeria and to find solutions to them within the context of overall national development and to provide and promote sound basic scientific training as a foundation for the development of sports in Nigeria, taking into account indigenous culture, cultures and the need to enhance national unity. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, our sports sector has very high potentials and requires high level of technical, scientific and administration skills to drive it. The University of Sports is therefore to further advance knowledge through research and natural unit innovation in sports scene and technology. In all modesty, may I submit that the establishment of this university is therefore a giant step in the right direction and a major milestone in the history of legislative in Nigeria. Mr. President, the enactment of this bill will help in transforming the sports sector of Nigeria in producing the needed sports men and women, as well as sports administrators in various sports events. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, you will recall that this bill was passed in the last uh, um, eighth assembly, and I was very happy the current Mr. President of the Senate supported this bill as the leader of the, of the Senate then. In line with Order 773, the compendium of financial implication is hereby attached. I urge you all to support this second reading. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Chief Whip. Thank you, Mr. President. My name is Ojo Zakalo from Abia North. In supporting this bill brought by distinguished Senator Oba, the bill is going to do a lot 
for our football players. Mostly, at Pillar of Sports, I've seen many of these football players, because they are not educated, once they finish played in Europe or played in Africa, they come back home. Uh, even how to manage the wealth, the acquire will become a problem. And I see also that this bill is going to further the football and athletic community in all ways, because most of our children who are playing good football are just coming out of primary school and they will go to play football in Europe without any exposure or knowledge. So I think in supporting this bill, this bill I encourage, we encourage the younger ones to be able to play football, have education, and have exposure, and also be very fit to enter into any post. Most of them might go back to be good footballers, like Udegwami, who was very educated, and uh, other ones, and you can see most of them who played even in the teams like Enyimba, we are not educated. And after that football, nobody hears about them again. So I support this bill so that the, both the federal government and state government should take it seriously to educate the boys on the track fields, on the football field, gymnastics, and all the rest of them, so that Nigeria will become uh, a lot of money will be made from the football and the athletics and all the rest of them, like other countries are making. I thank you, Mr. President, for giving me an opportunity in supporting this bill. Thank you very much. Senator Francis Ibezim. Thank you, Mr. President and the entire distinguished senators. Senator Frank Ibezim. Not. This bill will actually encourage not just football, all aspects of sports, and this will this will actually develop sports from the early stages to the university level. It will bring unity in this country because sports has been one thing that encourages our country for unity. Anytime we are playing soccer or basketball or swimming, Nigerians gather together as one country. Besides that, it will encourage generation of foreign currency. Besides that, having a proper university of sports in Nigeria will help the entire country in solving youth restiveness. It will also encourage Nigerians to even study the Nigeria. It will encourage a lot of Nigerians who would have been interested in education to understand that Participating in sports will not stop them from um, growing in education. There's a whole lot that this bill can do for a country, especially at a time like this when we have challenges with our youths. This bill will encourage unity. It will encourage diversity. It will encourage progress. We need this bill this minute. I thank you for bringing up this bill this time. And I urge every member of this Senate to encourage this bill. Thank you, Mr. Senator Michael Nutch. Thank you, Mr. President. My name is simply Senator Michael Nutch, a boy south. Mr. President, this bill for the establishment of sports university cannot come in a better time than now. It is a sign of paradigm shift from establishment of College of Medicine, University of Science and Technology, to now University of Sports. Your Excellency, it might be a surprise for us to note that in Nigeria, after the death of Line Nisumba, Nigeria has not produced a referee that is of international repute. 
simply because we don't have such institutions. All the international players we've produced in Nigeria, they are the best in the world, but none of them has ascribed as a coach, simply because we lack this kind of institutions. Today, we have number one person in boxing. He may end up tomorrow coming back home without teaching others. Mr. President, I cannot do anything better than to support this bill wholeheartedly and ask our colleagues to please do the same. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues. My name is Ezenwa Onyewuchi, and I represent the Senatorial District. Uh, Mr. President, let me start by commending distinguished Senator Oba for this bill. And uh, I would uh, support this bill because this bill is talking about specialized institution, which is the trend globally. Now, most of the universities you find in developed countries are tilting towards specialization. And this uh, university will establish a core competence, which is sports. And when that is done, we have a population that is enthusiastic about sports. So that fits into what we need at this time in Nigeria. It gives the youth the requisite skill through this education to make themselves reliant. So we don't have our youth coming out to come and line up uh, for white collar jobs. So if we have this university, you can be sure that as the students are graduating from the university, they have engagements for them, both locally and internationally. And this will be a money spinner. It will generate foreign exchange. As we know today, football is big business. So Nigeria will be part of this uh, football uh, uh, trend and the big business in football and yield revenue for our country. So no matter how you look at it, the establishment of this university will add to the economic and social development of Nigeria. So I want to support this bill wholeheartedly and ask my colleagues to please support this bill. Thank you. Is anybody against the bill? Those in favor that this bill will now read a second time, say aye. Those against any the ayes have it. Clerk of the Senate. Mr. President, distinguished senators, a bill for an act to provide for the establishment of the Federal University of Sports in Kalagu, a Bonyi state, to make comprehensive provisions for its due management and administration and for other related matters, 2021, SB 138, second reading. A bill for an act to provide for the establishment of the Federal University of Sports in Kalagu, Ebony State, to make provi comprehensive provisions for its due management and administration, and for other related matters, 2021, second reading taken, and the bill is referred to the Committee on Sports and Social Development to report back within four weeks. Leader of the Senate. Mr. President, my highly respected and distinguished colleagues, the third order of the day is the second reading of the Federal Universities of Technology Act, CAP F23, Laws of the Federalism of Nigeria, 2004, Amendment Bill 2021. Distinguished Senators will recall that the bill was read the first time in this distinguished chamber on Wednesday, 28th April 2021. Mr. President, you may wish to invite Distinguished Senator Oyelu Isa Ashiru to move the motion for the bill to be read. The second time. This is Senator Lola Ashuru. Mr. President, my highly respected, distinguished colleagues, permit me to lead debate on a bill for an act to amend Federal University of Technology. A cap one two three F two three lots of Federation of Nigeria 2004 to establish the Federal University of Technology of Akwara State by upgrading the Federal Polytechnic of Akwara State from diploma awarding institution to a degree awarding institution and for related matter. This bill was read for the first time on this Allo Chamber on Tuesday, 27th of April, 2021. Mr. President, my respected distinguished colleagues, let me use this opportunity 
to highlight the background of the bill, which I believe will not only justify this laudable legislative initiative, but will also motivate this chamber and indeed the National Assembly to accelerate the legislative process in passing this bill into law. Background. The persistent acute shortage of available admission slots to Nigerian universities for students in this catchment area seeking to get a degree in different courses is frustrating. According to JAM, only a few qualified applicants usually secure admission to study in Nigerian universities due to limited vacancies available. This challenge calls for establishment of more universities to cater for the demand of qualified applicants from this zone. The Federal Polytechnic offer is a Nigerian tertiary institution located in Nofakwara State. It was established in 1992 during the administration of Ibrahim Babangida. The Polytechnic offers national diploma and higher national diploma courses. The Polytechnic offer has graduated thousands of students in both sciences and humanity courses in diploma level and higher national diploma level. The school has high academic standard, recognized nationally and internationally. The Polytechnic has consistently been rated eighth best Polytechnic in Nigeria with a population of over 10,000 students, ranked the best updated institution in Nigeria by National University Commission, has an interrupted academic session, and has been anchoring IJMB program since 2018 in collaboration with Amadou Bello University. The proposed university sought to be established by this bill is a specialized university specifically dedicated to research and training in science, technology, and other related disciplines. Against this background, it becomes necessary for federal government to amend the, to amend the Federal University of Technology at CAP F23 laws of federation of 20. I mean, 2004, to establish Federal University of Technology of Aquara State by upgrading the Federal Polytechnic of Aquara State from diploma awarding institution to a degree awarding institution and for related matters. This legislative proposal will go a long way in addressing the acute shortage of available slots for students who want to study in Nigeria. Justification. Mr. President and respected colleagues, the justification for this upgrading of Federal Polytechnic Offer is as follows. The Federal Polytechnic Offer is already running degree programs effective from 2018-2019 academic session in affiliation with Federal University of Technology, Mina, after receiving approval to that effect from NUC. The Federal Polytechnic Offer has also finalized the process of affiliation with the Federal University of Ikiti and Ladoki Akitola University of Technology. Three. The Federal Polytechnic Offer has a land mass of 1,000 hectares, of which 27% of it is presently put into use with good road networks and 10% of its tax and 3,000 hostel capacity. The Federal Polytechnic Offer has many competent and capable lecturers in competent and capable lecturers to train students in the field of science and humanity courses. It presently has 50 PhD holders as lecturers, and in addition to more than 40 of his lecturers, 
president in process of obtaining PhD in various fields. Five, the Federal Polytechnic of Art is blessed with modern infrastructure facilities, such as adequate water, lecture theater, well equipped libraries, standard medical center, entrepreneurship center, etc. Very and a very, very supportive host community and the needed human resources to immediately commence academic session after the conversion of federal after the conversion to Federal University of Technology. Objective. The objective of the legislature professor include to upgrade Federal Polytechnic offer from a diploma awarding institution to degree awarding institution. Provide courses of instruction and other facilities in different disciplines of pursuit of learning in all its branches and to make those facilities available on proper time to such persons as are equipped to benefit from them. Encourage and promote scholarship and conduct and conduct research in restricted field of learning and human endeavor. Relates its activities to the social, cultural, and economic needs of the people of Nigeria, and undertake other activities appropriate for the higher standard of uh, medical education. The federal government of Nigeria will not incur additional cost in converting the Federal Polytechnic offer to a Federal University of Technology. Mr. President, my distinguished colleagues, I hereby urge you to support this legislative proposal. Thank you all. Senator Wamako. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Mr. President and my dear colleagues. I rest to support this bill on the following grounds, Mr. President. One, the argument contained in the bill were well presented and very much to the standard. Two, sir, the Polytechnic has already ordered a test to, to be a university, has, it's already available in that university, so there isn't much uh, uh, problem in converting into a, into a university. Three, the request is merely a formality, formality from Polytechnic to a university just by merely maybe naming and making some few changes. Otherwise, the structural requirements, land requirements, all other requirements are virtually there. So it's a merely a formality, Mr. President, so I do support the bill is presented by my dear colleagues. Okay. I also submit, Mr. President. Thank you. Senator Salim Mkwari. Thank you, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues. I rise to support this bill that seeks to upgrade the polytechnic offer to a degree awarding institution. Mr. President, the craving of having a university degree by our youth supports this initiative. And especially having a university of technology further reinvigorate the reason for having a university within that region will go in a long way to addressing this issue of scarcity of positions whenever university is being applied for amongst our youth. This craving will go a long way in make, ensuring that there are positions or opportunities for our students to be admitted when this polytechnic is upgraded. 
And we know the area being canvassed for is known for its scholarship. And giving them this opportunity will ensure that more of the indigents of that particular area, especially, and the nation at large, is given or they are given opportunity to attend University of Technology as is being proposed. And employability of our youth is also another factor to be considered here because the whole world is now shifting emphasis to technology. And the more we make this youth of ours obtain skills that will make them employable in a global world that we have today, the better for the country. So I support this initiative in its entirety and urge my colleagues to also give the necessary support to ensure that this bill is read a second time, Mr. President. Is anybody against the bill? Those in favor that this bill be now read a second time, say aye. Those against any that is a clerk of the Senate. Mr. President, distinguished senators, a bill for an act to amend the Federal Universities of Technology Act, Cap F23, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004, to establish the Federal University of Technology of a Quara State by upgrading the Federal Polytechnic of a, and for other related matters, 2021, SB 702, second reading. A bill for an act to amend the Federal Universities of Technology Act Cap F23 laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004 to establish the Federal University of Technology of Kwara State by upgrading the Federal Polytechnic offer and for other related matters 2021 20, second reading and the bill is referred to the Committee on Tertiary Institutions and Tet Fund and to report back within four weeks. Leader of the Senate. Mr. President, my highly respected and distinguished colleagues, the fourth order of the day is the second reading of the Terrorism Prevention Act 2013 Amendment Bill 2021. The distinguished senators will recall that the bill was read the first time in this distinguished chamber on Wednesday, 10th March 2021. Mr. President, you may wish to invite distinguished Senator Ezenwa Francis Onyeuchi to move the motion for the bill to be read the second time. Distinguished Senator Ezenwa Onyeuchi. Thank you, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues. My name is Ezenwa Onyewuchi, and I represent Imo East Senatorial District. Mr. President, my highly respected colleagues, permit me to lead the debate on this very important bill titled Terrorism Prevention Amendment Bill 2021. This bill was read for the first time in this hallowed chamber on the 10th of March 2021. Mr. President, my distinguished colleagues, this bill seeks to amend the Terrorism Prevention Act 2013 to outlaw the payment of ransom to abductors, kidnappers, and terrorists for the release of any person who has been wrongfully confined, imprisoned, or kidnapped, and other related matters. Essentially, this bill seeks to substitute for Section 14 of the Principal Act a new section to read, anyone who transfers funds makes payment or colludes with an abductor, kidnapper, or terrorist to receive any ransom for the release of any person who has been wrongfully confined, imprisoned, or kidnapped, is guilty of a felony, and is liable on conviction to a term of imprisonment of not less than 15 years. Mr. President, my distinguished colleagues, hostage taking or kidnapping has become a fast and lucrative business in Nigeria. It has now remained the most virulent form of banditry in Nigeria and the most pervasive and intractable violent crime in the country. Kidnapping is on the increase in Nigeria and it is prevalent across all the geopolitical zones. Some blame the rise of this criminal activity on poverty, religion, politics, deficiency of existing laws, unemployment, connivance of security agents, corruption, greed, among others. Our unemployed youths are also turning to kidnapping to get money as a survival strategy. Whatever the reason, it is most obvious that kidnapping in Nigeria puts everybody at risk. 
the rich and the poor, old and young, male and female, foreigner and indigenous, expatriate and non-expatriate, traditional rulers, religious leaders, among others. A report compiled by the Financial Times and the USA Global Risk Consultancy in November 2019 indicates that Nigeria has the highest rate of kidnap for ransom of both local and foreigners in all of Africa, with kidnappers operating in each of its 36 states. The scourge of this menace has continued to persist till today. The reason behind payment of ransom is rooted on the fact that people easily identify with individual suffering. However, history has shown that even where ransom is proven to have been paid, the life or safe return of a kidnapped victim may not be guaranteed. The former Inspector General of Police, IGP Arase, once stated that the payment of ransom is counterproductive to the effort to check in kidnapping in the country. He states, and I quote, as a law enforcement agency guided by rule of law and professional ethics, we do not under any circumstance encourage the payment of ransom to kidnappers or other criminals as it is tantamount to rewarding crime and motivating other criminals to follow that path. The former Inspector General of Police called on Nigerians to desist from paying ransom to kidnappers, but should, on the contrary, provide adequate information to the police to enable them to do their job. Countries like the United States of America and the United <coughs> Kingdom do not support payment of ransoms. Payment of terrorist ransom is illegal under the UK Terrorism Act 2000, while the USA adheres to a strict no concessions policy on the policy of ransom. The logic behind this position is as simple as it is compelling. In the words of David Cohen, a U.S. Treasury Department official involved in U.S. policy against terrorist financing, ransom payments lead to future kidnappings, and future kidnappings lead to additional ransom payments, and it all builds the capacity of terrorist organizations to conduct attacks. Mr. President, my distinguished colleagues, gut wrenching as it may be, the wisest thing for government to do would be to keep an eye on statistics because these show that buying out one victim strengthens and encourages abductors, kidnappers, and terrorist organizations, and thus puts many more people at risk. The continuous payment of ransom must, be, must not be encouraged. In addition, government should provide adequate security and strengthen the economy as a matter of urgency. Accelerate its poverty alleviation programs, provide employment opportunities, targeting youths who are mostly involved in abductions and kidnapping, strengthen our law enforcement agencies, and provide the necessary support to end the menace of kidnapping. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, the proposed amendment discourages the payment of ransom in order to mitigate the rising scourge of kidnapping as it persists today. I therefore urge you to support the second reading of this bill and this legislative proposal. I so submit. Senator Alero. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. colleague. Let me start by thanking my colleague, Senator Ejongwa, for sponsoring this bill. Uh, payment of ransom is counterproductive in preventing kidnapping and terrorism in Nigeria. The more ransom you pay, the more likely you are to have terrorists and bandits you know, harassing you. Um, if you don't pay the ransom, it will discourage the kidnappers, it will discourage the terrorists, and eventually the captives will be released. But Mr. President, going beyond that, we need to also, to also strengthen the law enforcement agents so that they can track the bandits and the terrorists, so that we can immediately get the people that are uh, kidnapped released immediately. A situation where 
you have people that are being kidnapped and kept in a particular place for more than 30 and 40 days. And our security agents are not able to get them released, called to question. With the use of technology, they can easily be tracked and be apprehended. But we don't do that, Mr. President. And that's why people go extra mile to get money, to get their relatives released. So payment or onsen is no good. But at the same time, we should encourage the security agents to use technology to track the bandits or the terrorists so that they can easily be arrested and be prosecuted. I believe if we do that, it will go a long way in solving the problem of insurgency, terrorism, and uh, banditry in Nigeria. So the bill is good. I support it. And I urge all my colleagues to do the same. Thank you very much. Is anybody against the bill? Those in favor that this bill be now read a second time, say aye. Those against any, the aye sign. Clerk of the Senate. Mr. President, distinguished senators, a bill for an act to amend the Terrorism Prevention Act 2013 and for other matters connected there to 2021, SB 662, second reading. A bill for an act to amend the Terrorism Prevention Act 2013 and for other matters connected there to 2021, second reading taken, and the bill is referred to the Committee on Judiciary, Human Rights, and Legal Matters to report back within four weeks. Leader of the Senate. Mr. President, my highly respected and distinguished colleagues, the fifth order of the day is the second reading of National Energy Bill 2021. Distinguished senators will recall that the bill was read the first time in this distinguished chamber on Tuesday, 15th October 2019. Mr. President, we wish to invite distinguished Senator Ibrahim Gobir to move the motion for the bill to be read the second time. Distinguished Senator Ibrahim Abdullah Gobir. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, distinguished colleagues. The lead debate on the National Energy Bill 2021 SB 81, sponsored by me. Your Excellency, distinguished colleagues, energy is a common currency, not only in Nigeria, but all over the world, because without energy, there will be no growth and development in the world. Developed countries are moving progressively today because they have adequate energy to play with, and those countries that are struggling with energy problems are virtually behind because they cannot cope up with their energy challenges and demands. The bill was read for the first time in, the, in this hollowed chamber on Tuesday, 15th October 2019. Nigeria is certainly the giant of Africa in terms of all the resources we can think of. It is also the most populous black nation on earth and the most resourceful of all the countries in Africa. But when it comes to the issue of energy, the country is certainly one of the least because the energy is not enough to go around in this country. Hence, the need to have this energy bill that will consider all the various energy sources we have in this country and advise on its effective and efficient utilization. Reasons for our backwardness in energy. Your Excellency, distinguished colleagues, Nigeria today is backward in energy because it has refused to utilize its abundant energy resources and the right energy mix, particularly in producing electricity for the country. It is important to know that the level of energy utilization in an economy coupled with the efficient energy conversion of these energy resources for useful purposes to directly, I mean, is directly proportional to the level of development of that economy. It is also an indicator of its ability to overcome all the likely challenges associated with the use of energy. Nigeria, with its abundant energy resources, cannot allow itself to be left behind in the use and exploitation of this very important commodity. Nigeria is supposed to be 
the main energy producer in Africa, but unfortunately cannot even supply its own energy needs, talk less of giving other smaller countries in Africa. This is simply because we somehow either refuse to develop or do not have the political will to develop it. However, with this energy bill, I'm confident that Nigeria should and must develop its energy base and get out of the present government. I also believe that with this present uh, government of change, under the ever leadership of President Buhari, there will be that political will needed to pursue this energy bill strictly. Structure of the bill. This bill is structured into 12 sections, with each section well explained in detail to ensure effective and efficient utilization of each source of energy. The first part of the bill deals with the objectives of the bill, and the remaining sections deal with development and exploration of each energy source and how to achieve its potential in terms of short, medium, and long-term objectives. The energy sources and other related topics are as follows. Petroleum product, coal, tarsan, and bitumen. Nuclear energy, renewable energy, bioenergy, electrical energy, energy utilization, energy efficient and conservation, environmental, climate change, and other energy issues. Energy financing, planning and implementation, and lastly, the hydro, use of hydro to produce electricity. In addition to the responsibilities of government, I have been spelled out in order to achieve full potentials of each energy source. This has become necessary so that local, private sector, and the international communities will know that government will do, I mean, what the government will do to provide necessary incentives that will attract them to invest in the sector. Private sector, both local and international, will be involved to ensure efficiency and the rapid development of the particular energy source because they are the main drivers of the economy. There is no financial implication on this bill since the agency that is to monitor the implementation of this bill is already in place, which is the National Energy Commission of Nigeria. Your Excellency, distinguished colleagues, this bill is important because it is going to revolutionize our energy sector for our economy to move faster and foster growth and development. I therefore call on all my colleagues to support it because it can be, uh, so that it can be given speedy coverage. The whole idea in the bill is that we have energy mix and that we have to make sure at each mix or at each sector, we will say we want a certain percentage of that energy to be produced so that we can have the required electricity in this country. I so move. You are excellent, sir. Thank you. Senator Ali. Thank you, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues. Uh, I rise to second the second reading of this bill for the following reasons. Mr. President, we have been spending a lot of money to develop our power sector. And the more we spend, the less we get. From 1999 to date, we have invested close to about $40 billion to improve our power supply, to improve our power generation, transmission, and distribution. But we are nowhere where we want to be. So this bill, to me, is important because it will certainly bring change in what Nigeria is trying to get. That is uninterrupted power supply. If we start using other sources of uh, energy, like wind energy, uh, bioenergy, um, even waste, we can convert waste to energy, as stated in the, in the lead debate. It will go a long way in solving our problem of power generation and power supply. So 
uh, this bill is important, and I want to urge my colleagues to support it uh, because it will revolutionize the power sector or the energy sector in this country. Uh, all we need to do is to start using all the aspects of, uh, 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 of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of what he stated, petroleum product, coal tar, sand and bitumen, nuclear energy, which we are currently trying to utilize, uh, renewable energy, bioenergy, electrical energy. In fact, the only thing we are doing now today is hydropower and fuel. That's all. Very little on uh, 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 solar energy. So uh, I urge my colleagues to support this bill for, to go for second reading. And uh, uh, I hope it will scale through. Thank you very much. Is anybody against the bill? Those in favor that this bill be now read a second time say aye. Those against any that is clerk of the Senate. Mr. President, distinguished senators, a bill for an act to provide for the legal, physical, and regulatory framework for the sustainable energy development with the overall objective of providing clean, affordable, adequate, and reliable energy in Nigeria 2021, SB81, second reading. A bill for an act to provide for legal, fiscal, and regulatory framework for the sustainable energy development with the overall objective of providing clean, affordable, adequate, and reliable energy in Nigeria 2021, second reading taken, and the bill is referred to the Senate Committees on Science and Technology and Power with Science and Technology as a lead committee. Leader of the Senate. Mr. President, my highly respected and distinguished colleagues, the sixth order of the day is the presentation and consideration of the report of the Joint Committee on Communications, ICT, and Cybercrime on Primary Health Care and Communicable Diseases on the status of the 5G network in Nigeria and its technological impact on Nigerian citizens. Mr. President, you may wish to invite distinguished Senator Oluremi Shade Tinubu to remove the motion for the Senate to receive and consider the report. Thank you, Mr. President and distinguished colleagues. My name is Olure Mitinobu, representing Lagos Central Senatorial District. I rise to move the motion that the Senate do receive and consider the report of the Joint Committee on Communications, Science and Technology, ICT and Cyber Crimes, and Primary Health Care and Communicable Diseases on the investigation of the status of 5G network in Nigeria and its technological impact on Nigerian citizens. I so move, Mr. President. Senator Nora Ladi Dadut. Thank you, Mr. President. Distin distinguished colleagues, my name is Senator Nora Ladi Dadut, representing Plateau South. I rise to second the motion moved by Senator Olorimi Tunibu. I so second. Distinguished colleagues, those in favor of the motion that the Senate do receive and consider the report of our Joint Committee on Communications, ICT, and Cyber Crimes, and Primary Health Care and Communicable Diseases say aye. Those against say nay, the aye side. Chairman, may lead the report. You may present the report. I don't know whether there is an, uh, an executive uh, report, something summarizing, or? OK. It's, very, it's a very bulky report. So I'm going to summarize. I wanted to also create the indulgence of the Senate. I'll start with just a brief introduction, and then I'll move on to um, 
not even recommendations. Uh, it's a well-detailed report, and um, it's just very bulky. I think and the recommendations also touch on part of the findings. Uh, the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, at its sitting on Tuesday, 5th May 2020, resolved to mandate its joint committees on communications, science and technology, primary health care and communicable diseases, and ICT and cybercrimes to conduct a thorough investigation on the status of 5G network in Nigeria and its technological impact on Nigerian citizens and referred same to the Joint Committee for Further Legislative Action, pursuant to Section 88 and 89 of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So since I've craved the indulgence of the Senate to move on to recommendations, because in the recommendations we can still find part of the taking care of what happened in the findings. What is a very detailed report, and I would um, also uh, um, ask my colleagues and uh, to go into them. It's quite, um, we did quite um, to the glory of all the subcommittees, we did quite a good job, if I may say. Recommendations. Having carefully taken into account the immense social, economic, and technological impact of 5G, over other previous generations of network, the overwhelming aggregate of favorable opinions for majority of stakeholders for its deployment, coupled with the fact that same has been successfully deployed in more advanced countries. The Joint Committee hereby shares the recommendations of very sensitive government establishments, such as the Federal Ministry of Communications and Digital Economy, the Nigerian Communications Commission, the Office of the National Security Advisor, the National Information Technology Development Agency, etc., and other telecoms professional organizations, such as the Association of Telecommunications Company of Nigeria, ATCON, Association of Licensed Telecommunications Operators of Nigeria, Alton, and the Global System of Mobile Communications Association, that it is appropriate for Nigeria to join the committee of nations that are engaged in the deployment of 5G for all its inherent gains. Though there is still a fair bit of work to be done towards creating the required environment and support ecosystem for 5G development in Nigeria, the joint committee is convinced that having witnessed what has been achieved by its lesser ancestors such as 3G and 4G, the technological impact of 5G will be such that we revolutionize, uh, revolutionize Nigerians' way of life from education to agriculture, security to entertainment, and governance in general if the technology is deployed. While the Joint Committee clarifies that there is no 5G deployment in Nigeria at the moment and that no license has been issued to any mobile number operator on commercial basis. It is our recommendation that Nigeria should still observe the trend of 5G deployments around the globe and engage in extensive sensitization of the public through all channels before commencement of commercial deployments in Nigeria. Relevant government agencies are also urged to embark on preparing the ground for putting the necessary infrastructure and technology in place for its eventual deployment. This period of ground preparation is expected to be utilized to complete feasibility studies for the various broadband projects in order to ascertain actual cost implications for their implementation, complete sustainability plans, provide enabling environment, including free right of way, tax waivers, sustainable power supply, improve security of main materials and equipment, eliminate multiple regulations and charges, recognize telecommunications infrastructure as public utility infrastructure, and engender public trust and confidence. The Joint Committee further recommends that global standards for the deployment of 5G technology should be strictly adhered to while looking out for lessons learned by, 
by countries that have already deployed in order to guide our own deployment. Lessons from South Korea, the first country with substantial deployment, will be instructive in this regard. It is imperative that intense safety standards and precautions based on available evidence are put in place for wireless radiation systems ahead of wide-scale implementation. Furthermore, given the infancy of the technology across the globe and the claims and counterclaims surrounding the possibility of health injury being posed to public health by the level of exposure to radio frequency, it is recommended that further attention should be given to testing and researching potential health risks that may arise from the deployment of 5G network in Nigeria considering real life situation rather than just laboratory conditions. The Joint Committee urged the Federal Ministry of Communications and Digital Economy to expedite the action of the committee put in place to develop consultation document for the deployment of 5G in Nigeria, which will include planning spectrum identified for 5G with the inputs of all relevant stakeholders, such as the relevant committees of the National Assembly and security agencies. The Federal Ministry of Communications and Digital Economy is also urged to publish the outcome of the work of its technical advisory committee charged to advise on emerging technologies and products, and as a matter of urgency, build the national backbone, which will run from Lagos to Katsina, trans-Saharan optic fiber network, to move much of the bandwidth from the shore to the interland and for distribution to the geopolitical zones. Despite the almost general consensus concerning the harmlessness of 5G to human health, the Joint Committee hereby recommends that the Nigerian Communications Commission, in collaboration with the mobile network operators, Federal Ministry of Health, Federal Ministry of Science and Technology, Federal Ministry of Environment, and the Nigerian Center for Disease Control, among others, should locally conduct a scientific experimental study over a period of about six months to ascertain if a correlation exists between 5G networks and public health. Also concerning the interaction between COVID-19 and 5G network technologies, the Joint Committee confirms and is convinced that there is no connection between them. The ongoing COVID-19 pandemic is caused by biological agent, a virus, which is scientifically connected with the 5G technology. Responding to rumors across the world that link COVID-19 to 5G, the International Commission on Non-Iodizing Radiation Protection, ICNIRP, stated thus, I quote, the claim that exposure to an electromagnetic field generated by 5G can both cause COVID-19 and increase its severity are not supported by any evidence, not even extremely weak evidence. And the large body of scientific knowledge regarding the uh, electromagnetic fields relevant to 5G demonstrates that those claims are not feasible. While appreciating the concern of the Office of the National Security Advisor, over the national security implication of 5G technology deployments, the Joint Committee hereby recommends, as postulated by the Office of the National Security Advisor, the establishment of an interagency working group comprising of the Office of the National Security Advisor, the Nigerian Communications Commission, the Federal Ministry of Communications and Digital Economy, and other stake, uh, relevant stakeholders to assess and address all the national security concerns highlighted in paragraph 9.14, and develop necessary risk management framework that will ensure that future deployment of the technology will be done in a manner that... This is where we'll draw the curtain on these uh, live brokers of Senate plenary. Well, at the moment, Senate has passed five bills for first reading and then five bills for second reading. The out of these bills that were passed for second reading includes a bill that seeks to amend the Terrorism Prevention Act. Well, that bill seeks to outlaw the payment of ransom to abductors or kidnappers. 
At this point in time, we will now hand you over to our studios so as to continue with our scheduled program for the day. I am Ignatius Unquo, and on behalf of the Outside Brokers crew, enjoy the rest of our programs.